This November, the community came together for Easton in the Evening, a small business showcase in which local store owners offered up refreshments, discounts, and raffles to visitors. ECAT covered the lead up to the event, so I had the opportunity to speak with Susan Rulazanis of Frippery Crafters Collective and Craft Studio about some of the hardships that she faced in starting her small business. Her story might surprise you. I have been unable to find a job that paid a living wage for over two years now. I've been door dashing and doing my Etsy shop and trying to rely on my little pittance of sales on Amazon. And I got mad. I got mad, basically, um, to work so many hours and to feel a failure that you can't support your, your children or child. And I am a single parent. So it was just one of these, this is what I want to do. I had a opportunity and it, it's really tough when you call an opportunity when my father died and I got a little bit of something that wasn't enough to do anything but it was enough to rent a space and that's pretty much it it is a studio and a gift shop the idea the whole idea behind what I'm trying to create here is a, is a bit of community I want crafters who who want to be a part of something big you know, a part of something that, that grows. But it is all of us together. I have a few potential opportunities later on that I can, if I get them, I can take everybody here with me. And that's what I want it to be. So the studio right now is my favorite part. That's tough to say. My stu The studio is my favorite part because it's, because it's mine. Because I finally have a place to work in, to be in. And the ideas that I came up with in my little apartment that I couldn't do because of the small space I had um, because we're not just talking space to work we're talking having to leave things out to dry and then we're talking storage I don't have any of that there you know now you know as soon as I make it I could put it out on the floor if I wanted and I can take up the whole table to make something so this is it's exciting every single day when I just walk around the table and realize oh my god I have all the space to work in and I can see my stuff you know I can see uh, if I keep everything sort of organized by the way I would use them by the flow that I use them I know specifically where something is this might look messy but it is still very organized it you know organized chaos if you will I wanted this to feel real like this was actually being used but while this studio itself is being used I am still working on it to set it up specifically to my vision and I happen to think that there's creativity in everything even accounting and I hate accounting like I don't math anything but there's creativity in how we how we handle situations how we um, the airs that we might put on or or not put on or whatever but there's creativity in everything so I think everybody is creative which means we can have, you know, I want people to come in for a class that is structured where if they feel they need to be told specifically what to do, they can be. Or they can come in and be told, okay, we're playing with beads today. Have at it, you know, and there'll be a pile in, you know. And if they need extra help, I just, they can get it because I'm here or, or one of my crafters will be here. Even the jobs that I've hated, every job that I've had, I've picked up something that's sort of helped me decide more of what I want and or how I like to work. And that's probably, um, while my age may be a detriment in getting a job with a living wage right now, I'm at the point where I, my priorities have shifted or, or it comes down to what, what and I, I hate the what brings you joy phrase, but that's what it comes down to. And as a single parent, who's been, I've been a single parent for the past 20 years, I have decided that if I'm going to put in the hours and still struggle, then I'm going to do it for somebody who appreciates it more. That, and that would be me. I love my boss. She's awesome. I can come in. I remember my mother, my mother came in the store one day and my mother, uh, my mother's in her 70s and she, my mother's wonderful. But, you know, it is clearly, there is a, a generation gap here in trains of thought or in modes of thought. And, you know, she still very much is women should. Um, the women are women should. You know, I think I spent my whole childhood with her telling me, don't sit with your legs open. So, you know, 
Say a, a lady shouldn't do that, you know. So she came in the uh, about a couple weeks ago, and she said, "You've got this cute little shop out there, and you're wearing that." And uh, and I'll be honest, I went through like three sort of phases of fee- of emotion. The first was resentment. I just put everything I owned into this. So where is the money for clothing? I gained thirty pounds with the pandemic. Nothing I have fits. Um, and then the second thing was, I have a studio. Part of my job is working in a studio, and I have worked jobs where you had to wear uniforms, you had to look a certain way, and it was never conducive to the environment you're working in, where you have to wear a suit and you're up freezing out in the cold, or you're, you're you know, anybody, anybody who works at a drive through knows what the window does, but if they don't want you wearing sweatshirts, you're going to sit there and freeze. I can dress however comfortable I want to be. I'm really p- bad. Like if I'm painting and mixing colors, I'll paint, I'll wipe off, rinse the brush in the water, and I'll wipe it on my leg before I change to the next color. This is how I work. You know, um, oh, I still, have, I still have blue paint on me. Usually there's a big line of paint here or ink or whatever. Occasionally, I've, I've learned the hard way about power tools and long hair. So when I throw my hair up, it's usually at the, oh, oh, let me pull my hair up. And so I'm a mess. But what matters isn't how I look. It's the store. People, and this is what I talked, I said to my mother, people don't come in to see me. They come in for the 40 plus crafters work that I have in here. They come in for handmade art. And if they are people who appreciate handmade art, they understand that work goes into it. We can't all be looking pristine while we're doing something. You're wearing something that's a lot more functional to work in. You know, now I have a chance to make a statement because now I'm in charge. This is what I wear to work. And it doesn't have to be to please you because you're not coming in here to see me. And which leads me into like half of the stuff that I write about the idea of first impressions. You know, you want to make a good first impression. Well, what makes a better first impression? How good someone looks, how expensive their suit is, or whether or not they sneer at you or, or refuse to shake your hand or, or something, you know, where they ruin, they're not even polite to you. So I just end up getting on my high horse like I do about everything else. And I'll stand in the middle of the store and say, you know, welcome to the shop and, and look around and uh, I'll answer any questions, you know, and I try to, you know, joke about, you know, I uh, have all the dirt on all the crafters in here if you want to know some of that. But um, it's, it's about the store. It's not about me. From the moment I met Susan, one thing was clear. She is unapologetically herself. Her passion for art is outstanding, and her knowledge in the craft is deep. But not only that, but she's a fighter. Obviously, I did this because I needed to have a job. That was, that's bottom line. I need to support me and the one child that I still have left at home. But the the store itself it's it's about it is i keep saying the word community but it it really is i went to a writer's retreat a number of years ago um and it was the first time that i had been around like-minded people i was not encouraged in my writing i wasn't encouraged in my crafting or anything you know it was always the nice little hobby and i made the same choices in my marriages you know where what i was passionate about somebody else wasn't and I don't expect everybody to be passionate about the same thing but I want you to enjoy the fact that I'm passionate about something and it's very hard to to fully be who you are when it's a constant you should be this as a as a wife you should be this as a girlfriend you should be as a daughter you should be this oh my god and my father will appreciate this dad is gone and I miss him terribly but we had a we had a volatile relationship. He's he's all over my book, and um, he would appreciate any snarky jokes that I made because that was that was how we communicated a lot of it. And the better I could get him, the more he'd appreciate it. My father was brilliant. It used to be hard. I mean, to get to get him math and science. That was that was it. If I, as a girl, because I'm a girl, you know, and mm-hmm. girls unfortunately are not as good as men. Um, my only option was to either marry well or become a 
rocket scientist or, or brain surgeon or something. And I had no interest in anything like that. You know, you tell me to math, my eyes are glazing over as soon as you start talking math. But if you want to talk about writing, if you want to talk about making things, that was where I would get excited. And that was always squashed. It was squashed because, you know, he felt he was doing right by me, by guiding me in the right direction. Now, because of my life experiences, you know, when you stop regretting what could have been if you started something sooner or, or even being resentful of what could have been because you started something sooner, now I am fully appreciating everything that I can do at the moment and knowing that I am the last word. It's sort of like being 18 all over again. The first, when you're first 18, for a lot of people, it's it's great because you can do more things. But it's a bit of a rude awakening. I can do this. I have to do this. Scary. Yeah, and you're responsible for everything like that. I almost feel like that now because now I feel like everything is my decision, which also means that everything's my responsibility. And it, it, you do have this scary, but this is exciting because I'm old enough now to have been through different phases like that, that I know whatever happens is going to be fine. You know, there is a fellowship. The idea of fellowship is being with like-minded people. You know, where, you know that whole, even that with three or more are gathered in my name, you've got the, the like-minded people that are setting up the same energy and setting up the same vibe. And, you know, when one voice becomes amplified, it becomes a bigger voice type of deal. So, the, the, and the crafters that have come in here, I have 48 crafters now, that they rent space from me. So, but pretty much every station is a different crafter, with the exception of one or two. I've started realizing that community tables for certain things might be good. Like for, you, you saw the Christmas pictures, the Christmas one. We have three artists that have a lot of Christmas stuff, so their stuff is set up for Christmas. But we have other people that don't do traditional Christmas stuff, but will make a few Christmas pieces. So now we have a Christmas table, and everybody puts their stuff on that table. And any time I make a community project like that, you know, I'm not charging them. They're not getting charged extra for rent. This is because it's we. It's we. These, I've gone as low ball as I can to get people in here. It was a sacrifice to not take everybody. I feel bad if I have to turn somebody away, uh, a crafter who wants to come in, but I don't want people to walk in here with any preconceived notion about what they're going to find here other than they will find something and they'll have the price range for it. You know, they're going to, and I'm not saying, that's not to say anything of the lower price items would be cheaper, but obviously bigger price items cost more to make. And, um, but you'll come in here and find anything, but I didn't want someone to come in here and just look around and say, it's a wreath store or it's a this store or it's a this store. I want people to come in and be surprised at what's here. I want them to take their time and look around. I have a small lounge in the back where I've got a couch and a coffee maker and a Keurig and some bottled water and snacks and some wine from my friends. But, um, um, where you can, if you came in with a few people and you wanted to even take a break, and that was actually started by my mother. She came in with some friends of hers for the grand opening and they're all, my mother at 77 is the youngest. And a few of them, you know, have a little bit of trouble walking or standing for any length of time. And they would shop, and then they would totally take over the, the other room, drink a lot. And then, <laughs> and then they would come out shopping again. But um, obviously, my events here are bring your own alcohol. Unless I, um, I can, I, there are certain events that I will serve alcohol at that I have to get the necessary permits for, but... Because we're still new, there are people that offer different types of classes around, and one of the things I wanted to make sure is that what we offer here in classes, you can't just, I'm not going to say you can't get anywhere else, it's not like a burger, hammer and stain up the street, they make wonderful, these wonderful signs. There's no need for me to compete with them, because we have so many different artists here, we have so many different opportunities to make things. I can teach something, and I want to say out of the 48 15 of them are willing to teach classes, and some of them have their little specialties. So if you have um, Debbie who makes sea glass, she wire wraps sea glass jewelry. 
she can teach wire wrapping and it is a very set step by step you know when you come in that you're gonna get you're gonna learn how to make this one item and it will be step by step and then there is we have um, the the taxidermy class that became extremely popular Erin's class again she is also teaching everybody step by step and with the then with the hesitation it's just normal it's nothing um, unusual there's no I'm not creative enough per se because they do have things that they have to do step by step when it comes time to the creative stuff everybody because they've already been through the hard part of <laughs> stuffing the mouse um, that now they're talking about little things that they can little ways they can pose the mouse so by the time that person even gets to that point he's already had an opportunity to process possible possible options it's become kind of their own yes. thing by then yes you know, um, Aaron, Aaron with the taxidermy classes, those were a surprise. Those were a surprise. When she, it was funny because when she came in and showed me her photos, I think my first thought was, you know, I, I wasn't, uh, but, but I was, this is art. She had a little, it was a, a little mouse um, on a rocking chair with a cigarette. It was very reminiscent of South Moonshine type thinking. And I, I, I got it. I got it as soon as I saw it, and I'm thinking, a mouse? And, you know, and the picture, but when I saw it in person, and she brought one in this little mouse, like reading a tarot card deck, sort of standing there like the magician from the tarot card deck with the little turban on in a dome, it's adorable. <laughs> it's adorable. And, and, you know, at the class last night, or, or two nights ago, I'm thinking, I want to make like 10 of them, and I want them to do the kick line, the raw cats. I mean, we were getting carried away. Uh, I probably won't do that because where would I put it? <laughs> I'm offering classes for people, whether it's resin, because you've got the epoxy, the two-part epoxy resin, or the UV resin, which one's better, how to mix the colors, um, what, what kind of timing you have to work with, and the difference between the actual different brands of resins themselves. There's a lot more involved than just, you know, molding and paint, you know, mixing the, the water and the plaster like we used to do after school. I teach the overview classes, I suppose, okay. and we have a, and I'll, we have another woman who is a quilter. She makes these beautiful quilts. She actually used to work for Safflers, and Safflers was a big fabric store, a big fixture in Whitman for a thousand years. They've been closed long enough a while that you know people still remember them. Safflers was where you went to get your fabric. So anybody who worked there knew what they were doing. I mean, she's experienced. She wants to teach quilting. But there are a lot of people that don't understand the basics of sewing. So she's starting with an overview class of just learning how to use the sewing machine. And like my resin classes, like my jewelry making basics class, another one, there are too many different ways to make jewelry. You know, you've got the wire wrapping, you've got the beading, and then you've got the basic, what are the tools? You get the overview classes and hopefully we'll be able to sort of seg into, you know, future classes that that go more into the specific techniques. Not but I will also have the this is this, this is this, this is how you do it class. But I do like the idea more of the a little more organic growth of the classes. You know, you you it's it's a slower way to build a group of people. But it does, again, it's, it's all about community, it's all about sharing, it's all about teaching each other. And it's, it's really cool, like, the different uh, energy that different people bring to these classes. I mean, um, uh, Angela, who teaches the sewing class, she's so passionate about teaching sewing, about quilting, and she's so excited, and it's so... It just sort of falls in line about what I believe, that people should be doing wh what they know they're good at. And this allows that. Obviously, having so many other teachers or people available to teach also helps me because they can hold classes while the store is open. The only classes I'm available to teach will have to be outside of store hours. A big thing is to not have crafters competing with each other. It's not fair to the crafter. You know, um, and it's not it's not fair to me either as a, you know, I'm, I'm, if I just took in everybody that wanted to come in, the store would be predictable, the store would be stale, and the crafters wouldn't be happy. 
you know, and a happy crafter is a creative person. You know, it's a lot more creative. I mean, we even have um, some potential collaborations going on. I take photographs and I want to start selling them and I'd love to start framing them, but frames are expensive. Ooh, we've got someone who's doing woodworking who now, um, him and his wife and I will be getting together and working together. And I love that. I loved when, as much as I love writing alone, I love writing, sitting around a table and bouncing ideas off of people. So this is uh, a, an atmosphere that I thrive in and, and I know I'm not the only one. With regard to the classes, we have women in here, uh, women and men in here that are extremely skilled. The first thing when we go out there, you're gonna t I'm gonna make you touch those cutting boards because they are like butter. They are so smooth. And he works with wood and epoxy. And as someone who works in epoxy, I know what sanding he has to do to do to get that. And that's something I don't do. So I know the 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 talent that I have in here, and a lot of them are more skilled or more talented than than I am. But it's it's still a, it's still different because we can still feed off each other. There's no reason to feel insecure. Erin, when she does her taxidermy class, she brings in the first mouse that she did so that nobody feels intimidated that mine looks a little battered or beat up. I guess it's all about being who you are and and I, and I know that sounds corny, but it real it really is. This is this is me. I feel like I'm coming back to me. I love being unsupervised. This is, it is an incredible freedom. Um, and even if, even if this didn't work out, even if I found myself five years down the line or, or a year down the line if for the gloom and doom people that say small businesses always fail in a year, um, even if anything like that happened, technically my situation hasn't changed. I'm still struggling. I'm still too old to get a, a decent paying job, but I'm so much happier. And if that's all I get, I am. This is, this is a very exciting thing for me to be doing and to be. I'm loving everything that I can do, even everything that I have to do. And the hours don't feel like they did when I was giving them to somebody else because there's no stress, there's no worry. I know that I can be responsible enough to deal with a problem customer without being accused of running customers out of the store because I may have stood up for myself. And now <laughs> I can stand up for myself however I want. Susan's story is one that I believe just about anybody can take something valuable away from. Whether you're starting your own small business or beginning on a new career path, or whether you just have an interest that you're trying to pursue, it just goes to show how far a little bit of passion, effort, and knowledge can get you. Thank you.